Hi everyone. So this is my talk on generative adversarial deep learning with solar images. So I'm happy to be part of this uh, workshop on uh, machine learning for space science and I uh, want to present our results and recent work on how to use GANs or generative adversarial networks to uh, train on solar images and generate sort of artificial solar images. So this is joint work between our group at the Helmholtz Center for Geoscience, GFZ in Potsdam, Germany, and the Jülich Supercomputing Center in Jülich, Germany. So um, let me start by um, giving you an outline of, of the talk. So um, I will first give you a short introduction on um, the STO data set that we're using. And then I will talk about how to use GANs to generate images from this data set and also how to explore the latent space in these GANs. And then I'll show you some results and give an outlook on future work. So I hope you don't get as confused as this cat meme from uh, generated images with GANs, but I will try to keep it kind of simple and give you an overview. So the idea is that um, space weather is of course triggered by solar activity and we want to understand this more so we can have, for example, this CME, these eruptions that come from the sun and then can hit earth and cause damage, for example, to satellites. And we want to understand um, when are these events triggered and the solar images can be a good source for uh, sort of the first understanding of these effects. Um, we have a lot of satellites, for example, from NASA and other participants um, that observe the sun 24-7. Uh, and the most important is, of course, the STO mission that was launched in 2010, operates till now and captures images with very high resolution. And we also have the legacy SOHO mission for older data. So the SDO mission has the two main instruments, AIA and HMI, and also the EVE instrument as well. And these are the two imaging instruments and um, they take about one image per second, but sequenced in different wavelengths. So on the right, you see the, all the different wavelengths that are covered. And they can also uh, trace different layers of the solar atmosphere, which is kind of important to understand the overall dynamics. This is a huge data set. The highest resolution is 4,000 square images. So this is really terabytes of data per day. And um, then, of course, since we look at the solar images, we can have a early warning for the solar wind that arrives only one to four days later from that. So there are, of course, different applications for solar images with machine learning. You could have uh, supervised approaches with an automatic feature detection. There you would need, of course, some kind of label data in a supervised approach. You could have an unsupervised approach where you just want to understand features and cluster images, for example. And then there's sort of something in between, which is a generative uh, approach where you want to fill in, for example, missing data or enhanced resolution and so on. And we are kind of aiming for a first principle approach in generative le learning by trying to learn the whole distribution of solar images from scratch. So basically generating solar images out of nothing with a GAN model. So how do these GANs work? They're basically a competitive game between a so-called generator network and a discriminator network. And here's an example that has been used a lot in the early days and up till now that is celebrity faces. So you feed some real faces and also uh, the generated faces from the generator to the discriminator and it tries to determine if it's real or fake. And in this way, the, both the generator network and the discriminator network are trained to generate uh, more and more better uh, faces in this case. These are both very deep neural networks that have a lot of parameters. 
So they can be hard to train because it can be difficult to obtain this kind of equilibrium between the generator and discriminator. And there can also be the danger of so-called modal collapse so that the generator starts to generate suddenly only one sort of image because it fell in sort of a local minimum trap like that. It can also be hard to evaluate the image quality and diversity of uh, this training. Nevertheless, it's very promising from the results that has been, have been produced already with, for example, these Liberty images. Our starting point for this was the uh, so-called PGGAN model that was published in 2018. And here you see the first result they had and also the general approach. So this progressive training means that you feed first low resolution images and then more and more high resolutions in the training so that you get in the end to the highest resolution images. And this can stabilize, for example, the training. Now, this was also a starting point for us. By the way, you see here that these networks consist of a lot of parameters. So each the generator and the discriminator can have, for example, in this case, 23 million parameters. So these are huge networks that need to be trained on GPUs and if possible on multiple GPUs. So here are some results from this PGGAN approach for the celebrity images where you see the very high detail already back then, two or three years ago, uh, in the celebrity features. And I show you now also a movie of this progressive training, so you get an idea how this works. So in the beginning, as you saw, there's very low resolution images, and then subsequently more and more high resolutions are fed to the networks, and then also more high resolution generated images can result. So um, we did the same for the solar images. And here you see uh, our first tries of doing this PGGAN approach with solar images. And you saw again how we fed first the low resolution images. And then we go to higher and higher resolutions. And more and more, these kind of realistic features start to pop out on the sun as the generator network learns more how to do these kind of things. This was only the very first approach we did I think more than a year ago now. And from that now we started to go to uh, different architectures. Before I show you that, here's again an overview of all these generated images from the PGGAN approach, where you can see the kind of diversity in images that have been generated. So this is to show that uh, the network actually can capture, for example, all these different activity levels of the sun and generate images with very low or very high activity. So um, what did we do with the training? The basis were these 171 AIA um, angstrom images that you saw just there. The EOV images that have been taken across about 10 years of the missions of the mission. And so they cover almost the solar cycle. Uh, in these trainings we did so far, we reduced them to a moderate resolution of 1000 square, for example, or even less. And of course, we only used images that have a good quality flag and pre-processed them to the level 1.5. So this was particularly easy nowadays with this AI8 file package that was very useful. Um, we did the training for the parallel cases at the Jülich Supercomputing Center. And the parallelization was done with this Horowat library. And this really enabled us now to train across very many GPUs. And this in turn allows us now to train at this moderate to high resolutions and to go even to higher resolutions in the future. We also explored what's called differential augmentation. So feeding more variations of the images to the networks to improve the training quality and prevent the early motor collapses in some cases. So um, as I said, we tried then after the PGGAN a new approach, the so-called StyleGAN that has been becoming very popular in recent years, or actually in the last two years, I would say. And um, 
And the idea here is that you have also some kind of style features in your image set that can be distinguished. So you see here how we have different features from these uh, persons. They can be applied to the source images and then it kind of morphs these style together in the source image. Uh, regardless of this uh, aspect of the latent space, actually the image quality is also much higher in the style again and now a style again advanced version style again two. So we took this style again two and trained again on the 171 AI images now with a uh, parallel architecture that I mentioned and you see how the image quality has improved more and still the overall diversity of the image is uh, preserved or the distribution is preserved. I can also zoom in here now to show you only a few of these images and I think now we're really becoming or really getting to a stage where uh, it's really hard even for a trained solar physicist to distinguish from a first look if this is a real or fake image. So you see how the coronal holes here look kind of realistic and also these band of active regions uh, look also um, as if they could make sense. So um, we're still exploring more details of the comparison between fake and real images and how the quality of these images really is. And for that, of course, metrics are also very important. So I show you one example of a metric here which is the FDI or Frisch inception distance. And we took these metrics across the iterations for a lot of experiments that we did. I won't go into the details of the experiments that we did here, but this is just to show you that all of them usually show this trend of reducing the FDI, which means better quality uh, to a minimum. And then often they bounce a bit back to go higher again. So this can always mean that either it's approaching again a modal collapse or generally the image quality doesn't improve or maybe even gets worse again. So we're looking into the details of that and to understand if with these general metrics or maybe even with more specific metrics in the future, we can understand more the training behavior. And also we want to assess in the end, of course, the overall quality of the images. So finally, um, I want to mention also that the latent space exploration, as I showed from the style again, can be very interesting. So here's an example for the faces again, where they looked into different features that can be controlled with these sliders here in this case, for example, the age of the person and so on. And we're also keen, of course, to do the same thing uh, with the solar images to maybe have, for example, different activity levels or so, um, and control this in the generation. So we're still looking into how to do this with the best approach. Maybe we also need some simple labeled data to do this more efficiently. So let me summarize what I showed you here. The STO uh, database is a large database that's very important for space science applications. And we use the GAN approach to generate high quality artificial images. And we have explored the, the capabilities also with the parallel training. And in the future, we want to train on even higher resolutions, the full 4000 resolution, compare the different architectures, maybe then work with late label data sets to explore the latent space and also use different metrics. So yeah, thank you very much for the attention.